Welcome to Sunning on Thames. And if you're not sure how to get here, just head north from Ligouge for nearly 600 kilometers, travel west for 60 kilometers, and here we are. Since Neolithic times, a human settlement has existed here beside the River Thames, but it didn't get the name we know today until the Saxon chief Sunna came up the river from the east and settled his people in this pleasant spot named Sunna's Ing, or Sunning, the place of Sunna's people. The settlement became the nerve centre of a religious community covering a large part of Wessex, the kingdom of the West Saxons. And when the kingdom was divided more than a thousand years ago, Sunning became one of the five great manors with lands covering nearly 20 square miles. It was from this rich background of power that three of the bishops later became Archbishops of Canterbury. The bishop's palace was built overlooking the river, and though the palace no longer exists, the Church of St Andrew now stands at the heart of the village on the spot where a church has, most probably, been standing since Saxon days. But Sunning is no museum of a village, just full of history and fine buildings. It's a village that's in many ways unusual. In spite of the changes through the centuries, so much remains of what there was, yet so little has been added to it. To appreciate Sunning today, we have to recognize that where many other settlements and villages have either grown into towns or been swallowed up by development, the limits of this parish are clearly defined and carefully guarded. To the north and west, the River Thames is a natural barrier, crossed only by the narrow bridge built in 1729, replacing earlier wooden structures. To the south and east, the valuable farmland in the Thames and Loddon Valley has guarded the village from both encroachment from without and expansion from within. Sandwiched between these major barriers, Sunning has kept intact its character and its boundaries. Through many centuries, the village developed a high degree of self-sufficiency. Traditionally, the River Thames was the main route for transporting bulky goods, especially wheat, which was brought to the village in the mill's own fleet of barges. There was also timber for building and coal for homes and industry, while boat building and other riverside trades like basket making helped to make prosperous this tightly knit community that enjoyed a tranquil lifestyle, almost aloof from the growing pressures that were building around it. The high street shops provided all that many required in the way of bread and meat, tailor, dressmaker, bootmaker and beer seller, laundress and straw bonnet maker too. In the 19th century, Brunel's Great Western Railway literally dug its way through the countryside immediately south of Sunning on its way to the west. Many of those who perished during the digging of the sunning cutting were buried in the village churchyard. The arrival of the railway helped the nearby town of Reading to grow quickly. Trade and commerce, people and living space all began to pressurize those nearby. The 1939 war and the years immediately afterwards saw great changes in the village, not always to the pleasure of those whose lives were now being changed by forces outside, though the physical framework of the village remained almost untouched. First we saw the bank go, and then the shop at the bottom, and their little sweet shop that we've always been able to go and uh, get a hype of the chocolate drops and things when we were youngsters. And it was the familiar faces, you know, and everybody could sit out or open their doors and all friendly and say good morning to one and another and wave. They were by the doors, weren't they? And uh, it was a friendly sort of place. Yes, a friendly sort of place. And in a matter of a few years, the high street lost almost all of its shops. But how could they survive in an age where easy transport and goods at city-based stores were often cheaper and in greater variety? Those shops that died have never been replaced, and even the mill stopped milling wheat in 1969, 
though this mill on an island is now a theatre, successfully drawing audiences from far and wide to the supper and stage performances year round. Slowly, the population was changing. No longer was the village populated by those who worked here, but by those who lived here and worked elsewhere. Those whose work was often far away began to enjoy living in a quietly beautiful village in which so much has been untouched by the advancing century. Peaceful living is beyond price. The majority of working class people uh, were working for some people who in those days we knew as gentry uh, and they lived in the big houses and there were lots of chauffeurs, gardeners, grooms, um, people all associated with the uh, looking after the big houses. Most of the people did, did work in the village and lived here. Now a lot of people commute. I think that the people, a lot of the people who live here are, and who do commute are very, very nice people and have the village at heart. Part of the inevitable change meant that the Sunning Fire Brigade, for so many years the protector and defender of the village, lost its autonomy and became part of the county fire service. Change there certainly was, and without it, the village may have withered to become a touristic anachronism. Today, the university farm, extending over 500 acres around the southeastern edge of the parish, not only carries on a financially sound pattern of agriculture, but contributes to research programs at the University of Reading and wider afield. As an important part of its work, it also introduces many thousands of children each year to the complexities and satisfaction of working hand in hand with nature. The Blue Coat School of Reading, after 300 years in the town of its foundation, moved to Sunning and today has between five and six hundred pupils enjoying superb surroundings and learning facilities. And the expanse of playing fields and the range of sports and drama offered as part of a generous education is the envy of many schools today. At the heart of the village, the modern Church of England primary school not only draws its pupils from within the village but from some surrounding villages too. How lucky are those children? Together with great encouragement and support from parents, school authorities and staff, their pattern of education now includes practical experience of meeting, living and working with people of another country. That's an opportunity that many thousands of children never get, let alone at this early age. The villages of Ligugia and Sonning have found several aspects in common and those are the ones that we are working on and developing. I think the, the village of Sonning um, benefits from the pupil exchange insofar as it's forming a very strong component in the whole twinning experience. These are the children who will be the adults of Sonning and Chava later and the friendships they are now developing will be ones that hopefully some of them will stay with their, them for their lifetimes. So an integral part of the, of the personal friendships which form the basis of a twinning. As far as our pupils are concerned and their families in, in the present, they're benefiting from the experience of living as members of another community in the families, uh, learning the language and having an altogether broadening experience that wouldn't have on a daily basis in school life. Amidst the hurly-burly of modern living, the Church of St Andrew in Sunning remains a cornerstone of village life. Harvest Festival has a strong personal significance in a rural parish, and as summer gives way to autumn, we are reminded of our dependence on forces that perhaps we still do not fully comprehend. Sunning gently changes with the seasons, with autumn frosts, colouring the willows beside the river as the year slips quietly into the cold and snows of winter. The springtime floods that follow bring new life to the meadows beside the river and herald new hope for lush grazing and rich crops from the farm. To those who live here, the new seasons each bring their pleasures, which are shared amongst those who have a mind to share them. We would like to share some of them with you.